Journalism means going where the action is and recording it as it happens. As in this office occupation in the centre of London. We're occupying this office in order to save Lumen Forest. Hello there. Excuse me. It's okay, that's all right. Look, look. Thank you. The police refused to accept my press credentials and arrested me because I couldn't remember my press card pin number took his camera and wrenched it away from him and then um, he was dragged downstairs and he's got his arm behind his back and, and they got his camera. Not only was I locked in a cell until the news deadlines had passed, but my press card and all my tapes were confiscated. <laughs> Undercurrent spent a year investigating the extent to which the police are able to control and manipulate the news. During the evictions of the protest camps at Manchester Airport, the police corralled all the journalists into a special press pen. The press pens are set up by the police and uh, whoever's, I don't know, behind the road or whatever, so it's not in their interest to, to give you a brilliant view. So I think it's evolved from individual PCs just shoving people around through to what is now a high-level decision that this is the way that news will be managed. Can you explain why we're not given a camera position where we can actually see the evictions Any other taking questions? place? Any other questions? I, I think that was a question. Yes, yeah, so I've taken enough from you, thank you very much. But could I ask that question? Yes, no, you can't. Now, I've, I've dealt with that question, that's well, all I'm saying at the moment. Why, why? A few journalists did, however, report from inside the police cordon, both in the trees and in the tunnels. I'm, I'm here because I really, truly believe that the press needs to be on the front line of protests like this. Uh, partly because the press is not allowed into protests like this, and it is, in theory, illegal to come here. And yet I think some of the things which are happening here are of great interest to the wider public. Freelance photographer Nick Cobbing was the only journalist reporting from the trees when the evictions began. I got two or three rolls of good shots. Um, most of the, the, the protesters had been removed from the tree already and I'd photographed them being lowered down. It's exactly what I wanted to do. Um, and I, you know, I said to the crime, you know, I'd, I'd be quite happy to go down now you know, when, when you're ready. And he said, well, that's fine, I'll, I'll drop you down next. But despite showing the police his press card, Nick was arrested for obstruction and held in custody until all his news deadlines had passed. I think the procedures for dealing with journalists and the access that journalists are allowed and the protocols to do with that need to be looked at. And I don't think it should be up to the chief police officer on the day or in charge of the operation to suddenly say, right, that's it, having no press access to this event. Effectively, that's, that's a news blackout. Next casualty was HTV producer John Fraser Williams. My name's John Williams, I'm a journalist with HTV. Yeah. I was lying in a sleeping bag and um, I was thrown over onto the ground. The leader of the party that came in to turn the thing over, I identified myself to him as a journalist and he probably kicked me in the ribs and hit me over the ear with this truncheon. I'd like to report that formally as an assault and I'd be grateful if you could take action against the individual concerned. I asked the secretary of the press card scheme what he would like to see as a solution to the problems. We want the police to put on paper and to, more importantly than put on paper, 
to instruct all our officers on the ground to recognise the press card. They need to get it straight that the press card it actually means something, because a lot of times now, if you, you, you can't get through police lines. I, I was in Germany a couple of weeks ago covering um, the nuclear protests over there, and there was police everywhere, there was 30,000 police, but as long as you, if you had a press card, that's fine, you could go anywhere you wanted. Whereas here, <clears throat> almost every time now, if the, poli you know, the police won't let you go anywhere, they try and corral you into a small area, keep you away from the action. Video journalist Maren Gergensen also reported on the nuclear protests in Germany and followed the story of British activists adopting the same techniques at Sellafield. In Germany, there were 30,000 police and I had no problems to, to go everywhere and to film everything what was happening. And in Sellafield, I was all alone. There were about 10 police, maybe, 10 policemen, and I just got nicked immediately. I'm going to stay. Right, you're under arrest for trespassing on the I... railway line, OK? Oh, you don't have to say anything, but behind me, you don't mention any questions. Yeah. Just let me give you evidence. While reporting on the anti-vivisection protests at Hillgrove Farm in Oxford, I met freelance video journalist Gerard O'Sullivan. But I'm there filming other things that um, they don't want filmed, and they, I'm always getting harassment from the police. On a recent uh, demo at uh, Hillgrove Farm, I uh, filmed somebody being arrested. And then all of a sudden, I was like a load of policemen around me, taking, uh, not taking the camera off of me, yanking the camera away from me, and led me away under Section 2 of the Harassment Act. Was he really arrested for using the camera? He was arrested for using the camera, sir. So, uh, Sorry? Arrested having the camera, sir. Well, this law was brought in to um, stop women being stalked, or anybody that matter being stalked. And, and it seems now that they're using this law uh, against photographers. Um, really, the BBC and ITV and people had pretty much the monopoly on t television pictures. But no, um, you know, you go out at the high eight, if you, you know, if you know how to use it, you've got broadcast quality footage. And it's only logical that they should be putting strategies in place to deal with what they must perceive as being a threat to the way in which they are used to operating. I asked Thames Valley Police Press Office what written guidelines existed for officers when dealing with the media. Do you think written guidelines should exist for, um, for officers on the ground when dealing with members of the press? Well, we, they do exist, but you know, in here, you know, officers, officers can come to us, you know, if they, if they have any queries. Right. Would it be possible to see the uh, the written guidelines? Very internal document. Right. Does that mean that we would be able to see them or not? That's an internal document. Right. So, so written guidelines for officers on how to deal with members of the press aren't available to those members of the press. I later discovered that the police have also been using court orders to seize photographs and video footage. When photographer Robert Todd photographed hunt saboteurs at a hunt in Hampshire, the last thing he expected was an early morning visit a few days later. Well, they turned up with uh, a normal search warrant. Uh, basically, it intimidates you into handing over the material because the wording on the warrant basically meant that they could confiscate all my animal rights footage, um, any equipment used to store that footage, which is obviously my computers, and also any uh, equipment used to take that footage, which would have basically put me out of business until I could obtain it back from the courts. I don't want to spend hours and, and a lot of money getting pictures in order to have the police walk off with them as evidence. Uh, it's never happened to me. Uh, I've managed to keep my pictures to myself on every occasion that I've been arrested. Uh, whether I hide them, pass them to colleagues, uh, manage to get them out of the country, uh, all these things at various times. During the course of my investigation, I was also singled out for harassment by certain officers from Scotland Yard. Is there anything that you're trying to hide by any chance? Not at all. Well, it just seems that whichever way I move, you seem to move in front of me. So you'd be quite right. So why are you stopping me filming? 
Excuse me. Turn the camera off, I... okay? Otherwise, I'll arrest you. For, Have you for, got that? For what? Breach of high park regulations. You cannot arrest okay? me for breach of high park regulations. I have okay. every right to film You're here. You're committing an offence at the moment. I'm, a, okay? I'm an accredited journalist. I have every right to film here. You are not allowed here. to film in a high park without written authority from the Secretary of State. I am allowed to. Yeah. Have you got permission? Have you got that yes, on you? Yes, I have, yes. Right, let's see it. When I'm dealing with this, I'll come back to you, okay? Fine. The Association of Chief Police Officers also refused undercurrents a filmed interview. However, I still managed to question ACPO media spokesperson Tim Marney about the official police line. Do you have any idea as to why all of a sudden it's starting to go wrong? I have, what is the evidence for the statement that it's quote, starting to go wrong? The evidence that we've collected from uh, various journalists that have found themselves arrested and then released without charge after deadlines have uh, disappeared. That wasn't the question, of course. The question was, do police forces set out to manipulate and control the media? And the answer is, there's no intent to do that, no. Two weeks later, at this protest in London, I was the only journalist present. Again, I was the only person to be arrested. Here you are. Yeah, I'm a member of the press, yeah. You are? What, what, what part? Uh, I'm a freelance journalist. So you're not really a member of the press, are you? I am a member of the press, yes. Freelance journalist? Yeah, freelance you're just journalist. doing this? Sorry? Switch your camera off. Can I ask you why you want me to turn my camera off? Right, you're filming me now, aren't you? It's, um, it's my shot. While I was filming, I was assaulted and arrested by a police officer for breach of the peace. Although I managed to film both my assault and my own arrest, while I was in custody, the police erased that part of the tape. However, they forgot to switch the microphone off when they did this. This is the first hard piece of evidence we have that police are erasing tapes and destroying evidence. It's a, it's a warning. It's it's a way of putting off journalists from going to these events and the first journalists to put off the most the easiest targets are the freelancers because you you are not on a clear contract the question is is it the police that have been getting worse or, or, or have they always been like that um, and is it simply the reporting that's getting more incisive and more critical and i suspect that it's at least part of the latter there seems to be no real guts in newspaper editors, or magazine editors for that matter, to continue to protect the rights of individual journalists. Um, and to be honest, most of the public seem to be much more interested in the fantasy world of the soaps than in the real world of, of actually what's happening.